Okay, I've gathered all the parts I need to build out the top of my battery here. So, first of all, this is what I'm going to be using to balance charge my battery. It's a little bit underpowered. It takes about two days to fully charge the battery, um, but it has a balance connection lead. So, this guy plugs into that charger, and I bought a three pack of these cables so that I can get enough length to make it easily fit my battery. I'm going to chop this end off, hook these to each individual cell so that the charger can manage and monitor the voltage of each cell independently. This is normally used for radio controlled aircrafts um, using tiny, you know, small set, sets of batteries. Um, for this battery here, like I say, it's going to take a long time to charge it. So I can bulk charge the battery with a bigger power supply and just use this to top it up and to top balance all the batteries if I need to. This is the all important 200 amp circuit breaker. Um, it has a little button that will automatically trigger it or turn it off so you can use it as a main disconnect. I also this have 50 an auxiliary circuit breaker turned out to be defective and never conducted this guy power. I'm hook onto a I had to return it and replaced it with a similar 40 amp model. Smaller output for doing 24 volt output um, for something where I'm not expecting it to do the full 200 amps. I got this little meter. It's a voltmeter and it also is an amp meter and it has an integrated amp counter so it'll count the number of amp hours that have been used in the battery. It does have an alarm where it'll beep an alarm if the voltage is above or below a, a set point. Um, it does not have an output to a relay or contactor so it cannot automatically disconnect the battery from a charger that's going too high or from a load that's taking it too low. Um, you can buy meters that do that. The one I was looking at would only had a 100 amp um, current sensor, so I decided to go with this guy that has a 200 amp current sensor, um, and I'm going to be doing that battery protection in other ways. Now, you can just buy these cables. This is an SB175 um, gray. It's an Anderson connector, SB175 amp, up to 600 volts, although we're just using 24. Um, and this is a single zero, a one slash zero welding cable. And these are uh, 3 8 terminals, and this is what I'm going to use to connect to the inverter. So I bought this cable off eBay. You just specify what type of connectors you want at each end and how long you want it, and they'll sell it to you. This cost me about 30 bucks um, for the inverter. It's great because these lengths of these cables are the exact same length and it has the plug I'm going to plug into the battery. Now on the battery side I'm going to make my own. And to do that you need lots of separate purchases. So these are a couple of feet of our welding cable. It is one slash zero or a single zero welding cable. Um, I got red and black just to color coordinate everything. I like having the things correctly identified by the polarity of the DC current, so I both I got the red and the black um, heat shrink tubing which has the glue lined heat shrink tubing. Technically you can use any color cable you want, um, but I do like having them actually match the polarity of the current that's going through them. I also got the same matching SB175 Anderson connector. It has two little pins here you clamp onto the cables. And I have the 5 16 lugs for this size cable. Um, both these pins and the lugs require a hydraulic crimper to do right. You can also do it with a hammer crimper, but you can buy a hydraulic crimper for about 80, 90 bucks nowadays. And so um, I already have a hydraulic crimper and that's just the way to do these connections. Um, so you could purchase um, a pre-made cable and just hook it onto your battery too, but because I'm going through a couple of circuit breakers and each cable is going to be a slightly different length, I decided to make my own on that. One added nice thing you can get with these Anderson connectors are handles for them. I'm not going to use a handle on the one that's mounted to the battery, it'll be permanently mounted to the battery, but I am going to put a handle on the one that goes to the inverter, and so that way I can reach down and grab that handle and yank it off if there's an emergency situation or I need to disconnect it. Um, but even just a normal disconnect, it's much nicer to have this handle, otherwise you're in there really yanking on it. Um, you might even have to get a screwdriver in to pry the thing apart, so, so having the handle makes things nice. I'm drilling the hole from the outside, but I will eventually be mounting the SB175 connector on the inside of this end plate. I'm a big fan of chamfering bits so that these bolts sit flush. Drilling the second hole while mounted to try and get this connector straight and level. I'm mounting the main circuit breaker on the opposite side from the connector. 
I'm sure there is a large wire stripper you can buy for these cables, but I've found that a razor knife works just fine. You definitely want to buy a hydraulic crimper if you need to make your own cables. I really like adhesive lined heat shrink tubing, which is basically hot glue and heat shrink tubing combined into a single product. Knowing where both ends of your cable are allows you to make the exact right length. Yes, these are the largest diagonal cutters I have. All right, this Anderson connector housing has some little metal springs inside. Those springs catch on this little notch on the back here. So when you put these in, you have to put them in like so. Make sure the black or negative side is aligned with the negative. Push in until it snaps and then pull back. And that seats this guy right in there appropriately. Then we just do the positive side. Once the cables are plugged in, I permanently mounted the SB-175 connector. I always like to position my devices first, and then route the cable, so that I know exactly where to cut it off at. I mark the orientation of the cable here because I'm going to screw it into the circuit breaker out of the battery to give myself more working room, but I want the orientation to be correct when I go to mount the breaker. I have my high-tech multi-charger X1 AC Plus attached to this battery. I'm just clipping them on with some uh, alligator clips here, so that's why I have the amperage set to 1 amp. Um, and if you'll notice here, those balance connectors go through this little adapter board into these wires, which go to my balance leads. So, the red one here is the positive and that starts at the most positive side. The next black one goes there, which you know goes to the next wire in. The next wire in after that goes up to here, and then we go here, and here, and there, and finally there to the negative side. And so that's how this guy can know the voltage of each of my six cells that are inside those modules. So you can see here they're basically balanced. There's two of them that are 3.98 instead of 4.0. Um, and as it charges, it will be um, sucking a little bit of extra power off the ones that are 4 to bring them down or to let the 3.98 ones raise up to 4 volts. Um, right now, it's set to an end voltage of 25.2 for six cells. Um, that's going to be exactly 4.2 volts, which is the absolute maximum this particular chemistry of cells um, is using. So I'm probably not going to let it get all the way up to that, um, but it's still you know within the rated capacity of the cells, although it's a little higher than I'd like to charge them. Mostly I'm just playing around with it, making sure that my sense connections work and it can get a voltage read off of each of those cells. Um, so this set of wires here is useful for this type of charger. It could also be used for just a BMS that monitors the batteries as well. I'm using this XT60 connector for my charging input. Soldering it to 8 gauge wire really needs a larger soldering iron than I'm using here. This is a pre-charged circuit. All it is is some wire and a circuit that goes through a resistor and a switch. This switch is rated at 1 amp, 250 volts. This resistor is 50 ohms. It can dissipate 50 watts, but we're not going to be doing that many watts through it. And this wire is 22 gauge hookup wire. It's rated at 2 to 3 amps. So this is going to be used in a 24 volt system. So when you put 24 volts through a 50 ohm resistor, you get about half an amp of current flow, and it's about 11 to 12 watts of power that's going through that. So a one amp switch is plenty because it's a half amp of current. A two to three amp wire is plenty for that half amp of current. And this resistor is over uh, oversized. It can dissipate 50 watts, but it's really only going to need to dissipate about 12 watts. And you use this to pre charge any capacitors in your load. So what it does is it bypasses the main battery disconnect. So when you push this switch, 
even if your main battery disconnect is turned off, it will provide power to your load. But it will do it through this resistor. And this is essentially an inrush current limiting resistor. So your load, if it has a lot of capacitors, will draw as much current as it possibly can. This resistor means it can't draw more than half an amp continuous, um, and it will lower that down. Now, you don't want this in the circuit all the time because you're wasting about 12, amp, 12 watts every time this thing's powered. So that's what the momentary contact switch is for. Essentially, we plug in our load before we turn on the main disconnect. We hold this button down until the voltage at the load gets up to 24 volts, and then we can turn on the main disconnect and it prevents it from sparking or having a large inrush current. I have a laser cutter, which makes cutting out covers nice and easy. But I still cut the first one out of cardboard for a test fit. It allowed me to spot issues like the fact that I needed to make a little more clearance for the main circuit breaker access hole, and the fact that the pre-charge button would hit the charging cable circuit breaker. Once I was happy with the functional size, I made a few test cuts to zero in the right settings for the plywood I was going to use. Then I cut the cover out and spent an extra 30 minutes raster engraving labels and directions on it. If you don't have a laser cutter, just cut this thing out with a jigsaw or a bandsaw and glue some paper to the top. Alright, so this is the main schematic for my battery. I have the six Nissan LEAF modules there. They're in two parallel and then one, two, three, four, five, six, so three series. The main negative terminal is connected directly to my SB175 connector. It's also connected directly to my XT60 connector for charging. The main positive terminal is connected to the charging terminal by a 40 amp breaker. I can also use this for accessory loads. And then I have the main positive terminal connected with a 200 amp breaker to the SB175 terminal. Now I also have a pre-charge circuit, which is basically just a switch and a 50 ohm resistor that's rated to do 50 watts of power dissipation um, that's across the 50 the, the 200 amp breaker. So if this guy is open and I push that button, it'll connect the load to the battery through that 50 ohm resistor. Now I also have a panel meter, which is a voltmeter and a current sensor. It has a current loop that's going around the main output to the SB175. I also run one of these wires through it so that I can detect current coming in or going out of the charging connector as well as current going out of the main connector. It's connected on the outside of this main circuit breaker and to the negative battery terminal so it can tell the voltage of the battery if this main circuit breaker is turned on. If the main circuit breaker is opened it will tell me if there's any voltage Voltage coming through the SB175 from, for example, capacitors and an inverter, um, and it does draw about 16 milliamps with the backlight on, so it will eventually draw down capacitors that are attached on the outside there. This loop is a current sensor. It's not actually attached to the wire, it just goes around the wire. And the final set of wires on my battery are the voltage sensing leads. basically have the most positive one, you know, we can call that number one, coming off of the main battery and then the positive terminal. And then after that, we have each additional one coming off of each connection bus bar coming down here, one after the other, so that as they go from positive to negative, they get more and more closer to the negative terminal of this series cells series of cells. All right, and this is the final battery. So I have over here the charging connector is an XT60. It just kind of hangs off the side. That's connected to this auxiliary circuit breaker here. Um, I leave it off unless I'm charging or wanting to use that one. I have the main Anderson SB175 connector bolted on there. That's attached to this guy here. When I turn this guy on, the panel meter gets power. I'm at 24 volts right now. Um, I also have the pre-charge button, so if this guy is off, that pre-charge button will provide power to both the panel meter and this connector through that 50 ohm resistor. Um, as long as I hold it down, this guy goes up. It only goes up to about 23 volts because there's a voltage drop across that resistor. But if I had something with capacitors on it plugged in over here, um, this would charge it up and then I could safely pop that guy up without any inrush current that might damage anything on 
the inverter side of things. So that's the battery. Um, now we're going to be moving on to the next video, which will be the inverter.